Hey folks, Dr. Joe here. Hope everybody's having a wonderful day. I'm having a wonderful day too. Uh, every week I sit down and I, sometimes I'll talk to my staff and I'll say, what topic should we do this week? What do you, what do you want to talk about this week? And we'll kick things around. But I, I thought I'd, I'd, I'd talk about something that's kind of close to home. I had lost my sister. A lot of you may not know this. I lost my sister to cancer about, about oh, maybe two years ago now. And I've had family members, uh, I've lost them to cancer. You've probably been affected by cancer somewhere along the line. So I want to talk about some research that's out that's very clear uh, when it comes to what may be contributing to cancer. I'm not saying I have to, I'm going to tell you how to treat it. I'm not telling you that I know the cause of all cancers. But a lot of these things hopefully will make sense to you. My one uncle, uh, he worked for a soda company, and his job was to uh, do refrigeration. So he would hook up the refrigerated uh, systems at, at, you know, if you had a fountain in, in, in your store or your restaurant. And one of the things he would do is he would release the Freon. And I remember in a hot summer days, he goes, ah, oh, I got a great job. I released the Freon. I, hit, I got it all over my face. It's so good. Well, he died of jaw cancer. And it was uh, very sad because I remember when I went to his funeral, he didn't have a lower jaw. And it was a very strange sight. I didn't know him. I, when the cancer got bad, I didn't see him when he was alive. But in his funeral, uh, he laid there with no lower jaw. And I've often wondered, and we all did, of course, was it the Freon that he was releasing and inhaling all his life or his adult life that may have caused that? So there's a lot of chemicals that now uh, the American Cancer Society are saying are suspected of being related to cancer. Now, let me say this. Let's assume I'm wrong in the things I'm going to talk about in the next few minutes. If I'm wrong, so what? I'm wrong. These easily avoided things, you avoid them. Hopefully you'll have a long, happy, healthy life. If I'm right, You'll be happy that you listened. And that's what's neat about a lot of the health care that, that I talk about anyway and people in, in my genre talk about is that many times it's, it's not risky to do it. For example, eating well. Eating a good diet. There's tons of studies showing that diet has a direct impact on your health. There's no secret about that. And I always tell people if I'm wrong about you changing your diet, I'm wrong. So what? It's no harm. But if I'm right, which I usually am, you probably want to pay attention. So cancer experts have identified 20 chemicals suspected of causing cancer, and here's how to avoid them. Once again, chances are these are causing it, but if it's not, no big deal. President's Cancer Panel released a report stating that the environmental chemicals were, a gro were grossly underestimated causes of cancers in the United States. The American Cancer Society responded by saying the report put too much weight on environmental causes and not enough emphasis on known cancers cancer risks like such as tobacco smoke and obesity i think we've beaten tobacco smoke and obesity to death don't you i mean we've, we've talked about it we've done studies about it we've done talk shows about it we've done roundtables about it tobacco smoke nothing good about it no one is going to say you know i think if you smoke more it's going to be a good thing i don't think anyone is out there saying obesity is a good thing so we kind of know that let's take those off the table you know it if you're doing it We've talked about it in the past and what you need to do to stop it. But I want to kind of throw a little clarity into this field of chemicals that may trigger cancer. And the American Cancer Society, three government agencies, international research on cancer, listed these 20 chemicals so far uh, not directly linked to cancer but probably are. So after reviewing the research, the authors picked these 20 because they showed evidence of causing cancer in laboratory rats and animals, and there's a strong likelihood they can cause cancer in humans. Once again, if you, don't, if you avoid them, there's no harm in avoiding them. It's not like, oh, if I avoid this one chemical, I'm going to have detrimental effects on my health. No, it's only going to help you. So what we're looking for, these chemicals which have uh, lack definitive data but most likely can cause cancer, uh, many of these chemicals such as nanoparticles are so new that there's very little evidence of safety or harm. Hundreds of new products contain nanoparticles that are being introduced every month. Now, a nanoparticle is something that's extremely tiny. And I've talked about this when I talked about sunscreen several weeks ago. Um, because if you, did, if you missed the show, go back to my website, drjoesposito.com. And we have hundreds of hours of radio shows archived. And I did one on sunscreens. And we talked about how they're putting nanoparticles in the sunscreens. And you can absorb those into the body. Where if you put something big uh, on your body that's not going to be absorbed, it's probably not that big a deal. But we're putting a lot of nanoparticles now in, perf in uh, makeups and in, in lipstick and uh, eyeliners. And the nanoparticles are nice because they're very smooth and they, they, they blend very nicely into the body. It's like sunscreens. I'm going to talk about sunscreen as one of my topics today. 
So just because it looks pretty and you're saying, oh, you know, I use this, this it makes me look so pretty, this new makeup, it could be killing you. But nanoparticles, just one of them. Most of the chemicals on the list are industrial chemicals. So for instance, carbon black. Now this is a substance used to make synthetic rubber. Welding fumes. These are chemicals that are on there, but others are much more common and it can crop up anywhere in your life. Like I said, even from sunscreen to the water supply. And one day of being exposed to it, not that big a deal. I got new tires on my car the other day. And I walked into one of the big box stores because I had the best price. And as I walked into the tire department, I smell the smell of the, 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 the rubber and the, and the tires. And I thought to myself, it would be horrible to work here because you're inhaling all these toxic chemicals all day, every day. Nobody tells these people that. Wouldn't be a job I'd want to do. Even if you go to the perfume stores, if you walk through the mall, many times just walking into some of the big department stores, you walk through the perfume department. These are all toxic chemicals, phthalates, chemicals that affect your hormones. And so if you're working on this all day, every day, it's an issue. And if you're wearing these perfumes every day, I don't know if we're going to have time to cover that uh, today, but that's something you probably want to consider not doing. And you can switch to something like essential oils. Essential oils don't have those toxic chemicals in them. All right. I'm going to have to go to a break soon, but I want to, want to start out the list. Atrazine. Widely used pesticide on corn, and it's so hazardous. This is the ironic part. It's banned in Switzerland, the home country of the company that manufactures it. So even though they manufacture it there, it's been banned. Chloroform, a water disinfection byproduct that can wind up in your tap water. Oh, got to go to a break, folks. Hey, listen, I'm going to open up the phone lines. If you have a healthcare question, not just about chemicals that might cause cancer, but any type of healthcare question, give us a call. The number is 844-44-DR-JOE, 844-44-DR-JOE. My website, archive hundreds, probably over 1,000 uh, uh, shows now, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe, number one Dr. Joe in the world. Uh, we also videotape my live lectures. You can uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. I send out videos and audio on the YouTube channel. You don't want to miss that. So, folks, the number here, give us a call, 844-44-DR-JOE with your health care questions. We will be right back. Question. Hey, folks, thanks for being here. do appreciate you taking time out of your day. We're talking today about uh, the new research that's out on cancer and some of the chemicals that are now suspected to be causing cancer. And we're going to tell you the things you can do to avoid them. Real simple. And I'm also going to get a little later, so you got to stay tuned on this one, uh, is aspirin. Maybe taking aspirin could be something that we want to include in our cancer prevention and cancer treatment. Wouldn't that be an interesting fun fact? So I'll, I'll leave you hanging on that one. Uh, interesting research on that. And I think you'll be pretty uh, surprised at the research. So anyway, we're talking about the chemicals that, you're being, that are found in food, chemicals that are being found in the environment that you really want to avoid because I've been lecturing now for about 30, 35 years. And I talk about things and then they come true. And people say, oh, you, you're like psychic. Oh, you know all these things. No, I just look at where things are going, where the trend in research is going, and say, yes, this is pretty clear that this is going to become commonplace or accepted fact. So do it before you say, oh, I should have done that late, earlier. I didn't know that. Well, I'm telling you, you need to do it now. Because so many people come to my offices every single day, again, we're chiropractors, and they say, why didn't I do this sooner? Why didn't I change my life? Why didn't I get chiropractic care? Why didn't I start taking supplements, things like Dr. Joe's Super Greens, Dr. Joe's Essential Source? Why didn't I do it sooner? And I don't know that answer. But I'm telling you today, start doing these things today, and then two years, five years, ten years from now, you'll say, I'm so far ahead of the curve. I mean, I, I haven't had animal products in over 30 years, about 31 years now, I guess, right? 80, uh, 80, 32 years. And um, Christmas Day will be uh, Christmas Day, yeah, 32 years. Okay. And people say, well, gosh, you were cool before it was cool. Now, of course, plant-based diet is all the rage, and everyone does a plant-based diet. We know the research is out there. It just made sense to me to avoid certain things back then. And so why wouldn't you want to do these things now? All right, more chemicals. Diesel exhaust, diesel engine exhaust. This is a tough one if you're driving a lot. Because diesel exhaust and, and car exhaust, it puts out chemicals, but uh, those chemicals many times have mercury in them. And when mercury gets into the body, it's a heavy metal, highly toxic poison. So if you're driving and you have to absorb uh, 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 inhale car fumes, that's not good. But here's the thing. There's, you can't absorb it. You, you can't avoid everything. So I want you to do the things that you can avoid so that you're healthier when you do come in contact with things like car exhaust. You know, cold and flu viruses. They're all over the place. 
Well, if you're healthy, your body's going to be able to deal with it. All right, more chemicals. DEHP. This is a chemical used to make vinyl plastics like your shower curtain soft and pliable. And I'm going to tell you how to spot that in a second. I'll give you a little tease. If, you, if it smells like vinyl, it's something you probably don't want to eat. Formaldehyde. It's a ready, uh, it's known carcinogen. There's no question about that. That can cause pharynx and nasal cancers. But this chemical, it's used in hundreds of building products. So if you work in a construction business, uh, got to watch out, has been added to the list because suspicion that it might cause leukemia. Now, where else might we get formaldehyde? Well, if you've ever listened to my shows when I talk about artificial sweeteners, aspartame. Aspartame breaks down to three components, aspartic acid, phenylalanine, and methyl esters. Methyl esters is methanol. Methanol becomes wood al- what meth- methanol is wood alcohol, which then converts into formaldehyde. So if you're doing diet sodas, if you're doing anything sugar-free that has aspartame in it, and that's about 6,000 products right now on the market, over 6,000, you're giving yourself little doses of formaldehyde. Again, you're going to have a diet soda once in your lifetime. probably isn't going to kill you. However, when you do these things all day, every day, that's when it becomes a risk. And so formaldehyde's already on the known carcinogenic list. It's being added now because it may cause a different type of cancer, leukemia. Lead and lead compounds, heavy metals. I don't think you need to be uh, told about that. Uh, polychlorinated biphenols. These were banned since the 80s, but the industrial fr- they were industrial flame retardants. They're still around because if you have something that was made in the 80s, probably still has it on there. Styrene, this is one I want you to pay attention to. This is, uh, we use polystyrene foam coffee cups and takeout containers. Please, I'm begging you, do not drink hot drinks out of polystyrene because it'll melt just a little bit. And these chemicals are now suspected carcinogens. We know that they affect your hormones. Now we think that it might be affecting, be causing cancer. So drink out of uh, glass, if you can, or mugs, uh, ceramic mugs. And if you're going to get takeout food, this is a tricky one because they always put it in polystyrene because it's cheap. Try to make sure the food isn't hot and never get something like soup in a plastic container because it melts just a little bit of the plastic or the polystyrene. Those chemicals get into the body, and now it's suspected to cause cancer, although we're already, we already know that it causes other problems. What else? Oh, we've got a long list here. Uh, dry cleaning solvent, perchloroethylene. If you've heard me talk about this in the past, if you get your clothes dry cleaned, I want you to hang them outside if you can or hang them in your garage. That's what I do. Uh, my shirts, I, I, la- I get laundered, but if I have a jacket or something, I want to get it dry cleaned, I hang it out in my garage for a couple of days and just air it out because those things are dangerous. Titanium dioxide. This is a big one because this is one that's used in sunscreens. Remember a few minutes ago I talked about sunscreens? Researchers are particularly concerned about the nanoparticles of titanium dioxide. When you grind it up really, really, really small, so when you put the sunscreen on, it doesn't leave a white coating on you, that's not good. The white coating is actually means the titanium dioxide is a bigger particle. It's not nanoparticles, and that's the thing that mechanically blocks the sun. So if you're getting these nanoparticles of the titanium dioxide, that can be some big problems. Now, this may not be a chemical, but it's definitely a cancer research uh, concern. Shift work. How many people work shift work, aside from everybody in radio, like you, Ahmad, for example? Growing number of studies are suggesting that workers who don't stick to regular schedules are at an increased risk of cancer. That's not fun. Understanding of what causes cancers uh, in general population has come out in large part due to occupational exposures. We look at people who work shift, we see a larger increase of cancer, and we start to put all the, the, the pieces together. Now, it can take anywhere from 10 to 30 years from the time a chemical is introduced to the time scientists have adequate evidence that it causes cancers, that's why it's important that you take precautions. So once again, let's assume I'm wrong. So what? But if I'm right, which I am, then you'll say, I'm glad I did this. Now, we're going to talk as we continue on with this, because I'm going to have to go to break pretty soon. Things that you can do, steps that you can take to protect yourself from chemicals that might be causing cancer, and then I do want to talk about aspirin coming up too. Now, folks, if you have a healthcare question, lines are open, 844-44-DR-JOE, 844-44-DR-J-O-E. My website, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe, number one Dr. Joe in the world. We archive hundreds of hours of radio shows there, so subscribe to my YouTube channel, and we put the radio shows on YouTube, and we also put videos of my live lectures on YouTube, so it's a lot of fun. If you have questions, some folks are a little shy, they don't want to come on the air. If you have a question, go to my website. And you can leave a question. It's a way to leave a question for us, and I will answer you then personally. So the website's a really good source of information. Also, as we're talking about cancer, one of the keys we have to look at is keeping the body healthy. 
so that if you do or are exposed to these chemicals, you do something that may increase your risk of cancer, your body's able to fight things off. And not just cancer, but all diseases. So try to eat the minimum, absolute minimum amount of nutrients. And that will be Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. There are two powders. They're on my website, drjoesposito.com. They taste great. They're also available on Amazon if you have an Amazon account. That I, have, I take them every day. They're sitting here in my studio with me. I would strongly advise that that's your primary step, number one step to take if you want to get well and stay well. And that's uh, Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. Folks, the uh, lines are open, 844-44-DR-JOE, 844-44-DR-JOE. That number rings through to my offices when I'm not on the air. Hey, give us a call. Don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back. Give us a call. Hey, folks, thanks for being here. I do appreciate you taking time out of your day to spend a little time with me. Hopefully you're going to learn a few things. And what we're talking about today is some new research out uh, from the President's Cancer Panel, the American Cancer Society, on chemicals that are suspected uh, in, in cancer and causing cancer and what we need to do to avoid them. So some of the chemicals I, I rattled off a little earlier, in case you're just joining us, some people do that. Chloroform, atrazine, formaldehyde, uh, polychlorinated biphenols, titanium dioxide. Sounds like a lot of big words, doesn't it? Well, the nice part is that if you do certain things, you can avoid these chemicals and get a bunch of benefits elsewhere as well. It's not just one thing. If you do these things, you're going to get benefits across the board. So these are some things that I certainly do, and I would recommend you do too, because a lot of times patients come into our offices and say, well, Dr. Joe, I, you know, I, I know I came in here for chiropractic care, but I also want to know how do I get healthy. Because when we take patients on, we don't want to just uh, administer chiropractic care. We want to get them well. Because we, let's assume we gave you the best chiropractic care in the world and, and to help relieve pain and uh, unpinch nerves and realign the vertebrae so they don't wear out and open up the nerve supply to the organs, increase circulation. That's all well and good. It's better if you're putting the right chemicals in your body. It's just like a car. It's good to tune it up, and it's good to put good gas in it. And that's why putting good chemicals in the body is so important. And that's the thing that you have control over. Because when patients come in our office, I say, listen, we can give you chiropractic care, but you have to come see us for it. You have control of what you eat all day, every day, and certain lifestyle habits as well that you can do all day, every day to help keep yourself well. So... What, number one, I want you to avoid this one as, as much as you possibly can. And nobody, nobody likes to hear this one. Grilling, barbecuing. Because when you grill meats or animal products, especially organs and things like this, when you grill it, they create little grill marks on it. And those are called polycyclic, uh, th those are called hi hydrocarbons, aromatic hydrocarbons. And aromatic hydrocarbons, uh, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, come from the smell of the grilling meat. And that's not good. Heterocyclic amines are also created when you grill. And heterocyclic amines and polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons are known carcinogens. And it's a shame because I hear stories all the time of people that uh, have cancer or died of cancer. And one of the things they did all the time was grill. And that's really unfortunate because they didn't know. And people tell me that all the time. Dr. Joe, I didn't know that. No one ever told me that those grill marks on my burger are heterocyclic amines which are known carcinogens, or the smell of barbecue. And yeah, I know. It's unfortunate. It's a lot to learn. It's a lot out there. But the good news is you don't have to go out and research it. I will give it to you. You can listen to the radio shows. You can go to my website, on my YouTube channel. We archive hundreds of hours of radio shows and videos of my lectures. And just go to my website, drjoesposito.com, uh, click on the media, and just uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'll send you the things out when they come out. It's no charge. And then you can tune in when you want to or not. I may put something out that has absolutely no interest to you. I may do a show on women's health. And you're a guy and you think, oh, I really don't care about women's health. Well, don't listen to that show. Go to a show that has uh, something that might interest you. But the heterocyclic amines and polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons is not a good idea. If you do grill, I want you to marinate the meat or whatever you're grilling uh, in some acid vinegar. Apple, apple cider vinegar works real well. Lemon juices. And add some rosemary to it and marinate it overnight, you can reduce the risk, uh, the, you can reduce the heterocyclic amines by about 90%. So I'm going to give you a little tip there. I'm going to start taking some callers. Uh, if you have a question, the number is 844-44-DR-JOE, 844-44-DR-JOE. And then we're going to the step, go through the steps you need to do to protect yourself from a lot of these chemicals. Jeffrey, how can we make your day better? Jesse. Oh, Jesse, I'm sorry. Oops. Rachel? Slap, it's fine. Slap your wrist, Rachel. Okay, good. <laughs> Go ahead, Jesse. How can we help you today? Oh, um, it's fine. I have a speech impediment because I had a stroke. 
I understand. But so it's the people. It's hard for people to understand me. Plus, I have an accent. So I it's okay. Okay. I had a I had a syncopal episode last well this morning. A syncopal, yeah, right. Okay. Uh huh. That's the second time it's happened. Okay. Uh, it happens when I, I wake up in the morning, and the first thing I do, I go to the to the bathroom. Uh huh. It happened um, four times. I've gotten dizzy. Okay. Two out of the four times, I've passed out. I understand. Okay. So, um, what are your recommendations? Uh, and I bet, do you think it's something bad? I bet you I'm about to have another. I bet you I'm going to guess the right one the first time. What happens, Jesse, is uh, when you're laying down, your blood is flowing, your heart is beating, and when you stand up, your body has to beat a little harder to get blood up to your brain. And so the syncope, the dizziness, or the passing out that you experienced could be because your adrenal glands are not pumping out enough adrenaline to get the blood up to the brain. It's called postural hypotension. So here's a way you can test to see if you truly have this. Even Ahmad's looking curious at me at this. You, how, many, how many shows have you done with me, Ahmad? The uh, hundreds? A, a lot. A hundred. Oh. And, and every show, Ahmad always looks at me like, I didn't know that. So, All right, so postural hypotension. What I want you to do, Jesse, is this. Uh, sit down, rest for a few minutes, and then take your blood pressure. Okay? Then stand up and take your blood pressure again. Your blood pressure, if it drops, means you have something called postural hypotension. So it's a real simple uh, test. I, Go ahead. I, I already did that test because I was an EMT. Okay. And we test for that. Right. So I'm negative for that. Okay, so you didn't have that. Okay. Do you get no. tired very easily? Um, since the stroke. Yes, yeah. but I had a single episode on a this spell okay. before the stroke. Okay, so a couple of things I would look at if, if you were my patient, and maybe you will be someday. I would look at the adrenal glands to see if they're pumping out enough adrenaline to see if you have postural hypotension issues. I would also uh, then check your balance because if you had a stroke, part of the brain was damaged. We know that. And the part of the brain that controls balance, well, part of the part of the brain that controls balance is the cerebellum, the back of the brain. So I find when people get dizzy and fall over, many times it's a cerebellar issue. And then what we do is we adjust or we manipulate one side of the body, the side that has the weak cerebellum on it. So we may adjust your feet, your knees, your ankles, your wrist, your shoulder, your neck, all the way up the spine on one side only to stimulate the cerebellum to see if we can get that balanced out. And then if that's not the issue, then I would check the inner ear. But the fact that happens when you stand up, especially after waking, sleeping all day, I would start thinking adrenal or cerebellum. Those would be my two guesses. Okay? Okay, so I need to see a doctor. I won't be able to do anything on my own. Well, no, unfortunately, uh, you might try taking some adrenal supplements. Uh, adrenal supplements seem to work pretty well, and that's something you could try on your own. Maybe try that for two weeks and see if that helps. And if it doesn't help, uh, then you might want to come see us or a chiropractor who uh, studies neurology as well, like my team of doctors, and see if there's an issue with the cerebellum. So adrenal supplements first, then check the cerebellum. All right. Thank I, you very thanks, much. I appreciate that. So there's a lot of things that happen with dizziness, and so, many times it's a brain issue. And when we adjust our patients, we stimulate the messages from the body to the brain and from the brain to the body. And in Jesse's case with the stroke, one part of the brain wasn't working properly, so it could be the reason why he's having that problem because the brain controls your balance. So, folks, if you have, if you have a health care question, number is 844-44-DR-JOE. When we come back, I'm going to talk about, which I didn't get to in that segment, uh, the steps you need to t take to protect yourself against cancer or the chemicals suspected of causing cancer. And then we're going to talk about do you need to take aspirin every day to help prevent cancer. And at least, folks, get on Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. That's the minimum amount of nutrients you should be taking every day. That's on my website, drjoesposito.com. And again, if you have questions, the number is 844-44-DR-JOE, 844-44-DR-JOE. Hey, don't go anywhere. Tell your friends about the show. We're going to be right back. Hey, everybody. Thanks for taking time out of your day. I do appreciate it. This is the show where we teach you how to naturally get well and stay well. And I'll go back to the callers in just a second. We got a lot to cover on things that you can do to help avoid chemicals that might be causing cancer. Uh, buy a water filter, absolutely positively. A water filter in my house is about ooh, five foot tall, maybe so, five, five and a half feet tall. Filters every drop of water that comes in my house. So the toilets, the shower, the sinks, the, uh, the, the tub, because even if you have toilet water and it has chlorine in it, the chlorine is going to start evaporating or the water is going to outgas the chlorine into the air. Again, no big deal. It's a little bit of chlorine, but this is cumulative. 
And that's what we have to be careful about because I can't prevent things like driving in traffic and inhaling car exhaust. But I can keep myself as healthy as possible in other aspects of my life so that I'm better able to deal with things like this. Water filters are now pretty sophisticated. They remove a bunch of contaminants, including chemicals like atrazine, chloroform, and some other chemicals and the, that the American Cancer Society included on its list of chemicals you want to avoid, like trichloroethylene. Now, this is a solvent used in body shops and mechanics garages and formaldehyde. The other thing, too, is that we may filter tap water. We may filter out tap water. We do an amazing job. I mean, in the United States, we do an amazing job of filtering out tap water and keeping it clean. But there are certain chemicals that we don't have filters for in the public. You know, things like chloroform, things like uh, atrazine. And so you may have to do a second filter. And I'd rather be safe than sorry. And we have, we have a couple of filters on our website, drjoesposito.com, that you can put under your kitchen sink if you want to at least get one faucet in your house that's clean. But I would recommend you do a filter for the whole house. But again, the ones under the sink is a great start. They're a lot less expensive. The whole house ones are really expensive. Uh, eat organic. If you switch to organic food, you're not going to eliminate exposure to a lot of chemicals like atrazine. Uh, you're also helping prevent those chemicals from getting into the water supply. And this is the trend, folks. The trend is going into organic foods. The trend is going into health care. The trend is going into chiropractic care as a primary source of health care. Every time I take a seminar now, when it comes to car accidents, everyone says chiropractors should be the captain of the ship. Because unless it's a fracture or something that's immediately life-threatening, chiropractors should be directing the ship when it comes to car accidents and then referring out accordingly. And that's pretty exciting. Because years ago, you know, chiropractors, oh, you, you don't go to chiropractor, they don't know what they're talking about. Now we're becoming the leaders in healthcare, which is really exciting. And also in our office, we include nutrition. We work on the stomach, which now leads into my next question from Aaron. Aaron, how can we make your day better? Hey, Dr. Joe. Um, real quick, I uh, called you a while back. My wife had gastric sleeve done, and she was constantly vomiting. And just from my, my describing it to you over the phone, you correctly diagnosed it about massaging the stomach away from the esophagus. She came to see you. Uh, either you or one of your associates did the treatment. It mm -hmm. was successful. Excellent. But now, and we're pretty sure it's related to her gastric sleeve, she has this persistent cough. Uh, there's no other, you know, there's no cold or flu or anything like that with it. It's mainly when she eats sure. is when the cough will kick up or when she lays down at night. We thought it might be something to do with stomach acid. I got her some Prilosec or something like that, mm -hmm. uh, and it did not help. Okay, yeah. Um, so what do you think it's might be going on there? Probably the stomach issue is, is come back again because when you put the gastric sleeve on it, everything spasms, and that spasm stomach can push up into the diaphragm, and there's a little hole in the diaphragm called the lower esophageal sphincter, and the stomach is pushing up into the lower esophageal sphincter. A little bit of That's acid is like in our cough. Exactly. A little bit of acid comes up, not a whole lot, and it just irritates the vocal cords, and <coughs> you have that cough. I see it all day, every day. A lot of people have chronic sinus problems, and I've had uh, ear, nose, and throat doctors send patients over to us and say, hey, check their stomach because we can't find anything wrong. And sure enough, it's a little bit of acid working its way all the way up into the sinuses. So has she been okay, seen by so us in a while? Um, it, no, it's it's been a little while because our, our for whatever reason, y'all are not in our insurance. And, uh huh. Yeah. Um, it just, I mean, it just yeah, it stinks because somebody insurance not is easy to pay for. So yeah, somebody insurance is unfortunately it's to the point now where a lot of doctors are dropping out of insurance as you'll see that because it cost some insurances that was actually costing us money to see patients. We were losing yeah. money by I accepting the insurance because we had to do yeah, so much I'm work sure filing. Not. Yeah, so. But uh, give us a call. Let's see if we can work something out with her and try to get her back in again because it sounds like that's what it is, just acting up again. All right. Uh, okay. Just one more quick question. Sure, go ahead. When she came out of surgery, she had this shoulder pain that she'd never had before, intense shoulder pain. And um, the shoulder pain has come back here recently. It, yeah. it kind of went away when she was seeing you and y'all were doing whatever y'all were doing. Right. Um, have you ever heard of that with a, a, a gastric sleeve patient? I, it happens sometimes with surgery because when you're under anesthesia, you don't have any muscle control. And so sometimes just picking you up and moving you from the gurney to the operating table, uh, your body kind of flops around. And I've seen a lot of people come out of surgery and have spinal issues and shoulder issues because their body was flopping around. So we probably need to work on her shoulder as well to get it back in place and get it to heal. So it's not uncommon to see. And it's, I don't know how to avoid that unless they take better caution moving you from the operating table. But I'm not in the operating room. I don't know how to do that. So. So how, so how is it then that the pain 
left but came back. Well, we probably adjusted her. She probably got some good results, but the adjustment what wasn't enough treatment to get the, the joints to stay where they should be, and so it probably came back out of place again. Okay. Yeah. So give us a call. We'll work out. We'll work that out for you. Okay. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Aaron. Appreciate that. And folks, the number here at the studio, if you have a question, is eight four 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 Doctor Joe eight four 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 D R J O E. Uh, my website, drjoesposito.com. On that, you can order Dr. Joe Super Greens, Dr. Joe's Essential Source. Uh, we have the seasonal uh, seasonal uh, booster, I think it is. Yes, it's something. If I have a cold and flu, I take that. Um, we have something in there that I take to keep my immune system strong. We have bowel cleansers if you're not moving your bowels two to three times a day. So what I've done is I've tried to get the supplements uh, on my website that are the ones that m most people need or going to require. So if you go to the website, drjoesposito.com, you'll see a list of the supplements that we have. At least take Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source, folks. That's the minimum amount of nutrients you should be taking every day. Most people just swear by it. In fact, I was at a party last night, and one of, uh, one of my coworkers actually came up, and her, and her uh, uh, significant other was there. And he's like, Dr. Joe, if I leave the house, even if I'm running late, I go back in and take my Super Greens and Essential Source. I know right away my whole day isn't going to be right if I don't take it. So the information on that is on the website, drjoesposito.com. Also on Amazon, if you have an Amazon account, may, if it might be easier to order from Amazon. Uh, but we want to get you well and keep you well. So I give you the supplements that you can take. Uh, we treat our patients in our offices because we, we do the physical work, but the nutrition things you can do. And a couple of things today we're talking about is uh, cancer and avoiding some of the chemicals that might cause cancer. And we talked earlier about uh, – uh, i go to break again. All right, I'll cover this real quick, then I'll cover it again later. Polystyrene foam coffee cups or teacups, folks, please bring your own cups if you can. Ceramic or glass is going to be your best bet because the other ones won't melt. The polystyrene melts, and now it's suspected to be linked to cancer. If you have a question, the number here is 844-44-DR-JOE, 844-44-DR-JOE. My website, if you want to send me questions through the website, drjoesposito.com. Follow me on Facebook. Follow me on Instagram. We send out lots of good information there as well. Hey, don't go anywhere. Tell your friends about the show. We're going to be right back. Hey, friends about hey, folks, thanks for being here. This is the show where we naturally get you well and keep you well. We give you advice that you can take home every day to start incorporating into your life. And today, specifically on the show, we're talking about things that you need to do to avoid cer certain chemicals that are now suspected uh, to be linked to cancer. And you know what? I'm going to make a prediction here. I'm going to predict that all the chemicals that we talk about will be proven or linked to cancer in the next, I'll give it five years. Probably less than that, but I'll give it five years. And I'm almost always right when I make these predictions. And I've been predicting now, I've been lecturing now and researching for 35 years. So I'm almost always right. And I can't think of a time I wasn't right, actually. But I'll say almost in case somebody digs into the archives of my shows and says, you said 20 years ago. So just in case. But I doubt it. Uh, be anti anti antibacterial. What the heck does that mean? I hadn't talked about this in a while. I got to bring this back up again. Studies published in the uh, journal Environmental Science and Technology suggest that triclosane, the main ingredient in antibacterial soaps and cleaners, can react with chlorine in your drinking water to form chloroform. And the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention say that warm water and soap are just as effective at cleaning germy hands as anti antibacterial soaps. Also, watch out for triclosane-treated garden hoses. This is something I didn't even know about until I did the research. They supposedly inhibit moss growth inside your hose. You don't want to spray chloroform on your organic garden. It's amazing where these chemicals are coming from. We're getting into our lives every single day. And so you think, my garden hose? My garden hose can be causing problems? Yeah. I remember being a kid. We drink out of the garden hose all the time. And it had that nasty plastic taste sometimes. And I'm thinking, yeah, wow, that's a problem. I grew up in New Jersey, and I grew up in a place called Cancer Alley. Isn't that a nice place to grow up? <laughs> uh, because there were so many cases of cancer. And now on Facebook, I you know, still have a lot of friends from back home. And it's so sad to see my friends dropping and their families dropping like flies. And most of them that I see are dying from cancer, my sister included. And so it really is a shame that uh, people don't realize what they're getting into. Now, where I grew up, we used to... Um, uh, play in chemical factories. We'd break, you know, break through their fences and stuff and, and play around in there. So we got exposed to a lot of toxic chemicals. So one of the reasons I got real motivated to get well is when I started realizing all the things I grew up inhaling and, and being exposed to back in New Jersey. And it's kind of interesting because some of the places that we ran around in are now condemned and they're just fenced off and they're just letting nature try to break down these chemicals. 
But other ones, they tore down a chemical factory and then they built condos on top of it. I'm thinking, wow, I wonder if these people living there know what used to be there, what their land used to be and how bad it is. But I, my, uh, my friends joke because where I grew up in New Jersey, uh, right near the Meadowlands. Bruce Springsteen sing, sings about somewhere in the swamps of Jersey. Well, that's where I grew up, the swamps of Jersey. And the Meadowlands would catch fire. There were so many toxic chemicals and, and petroleum products that were dumped into the, the swamps there that they would catch fire. And there's no way to put them out because it was burning underneath and it was in the middle of the swamps. And so you'd always know when the meadows were on fire. You'd, you'd say to your friends, I could smell the meadows are on fire. So I don't know what kind of toxic chemicals I was exposed to, but now I have to be really, really careful, and you should too. If you want to make your own hand sanitizer, I think you should. I think the recipe's on my website. It used to be. I have to look and see. But it's real simple. You can take any type of alcohol, rubbing alcohol or even vodka, some witch hazel, and a couple of drops of, of, of uh, um, essential oils that are antibiotic and antiviral like tea tree oil, and you make your own hand sanitizer. So witch hazel is an astringent that tightens up your skin. The alcohol kills the viruses, the vi and the uh, uh, tea tree oil works as well. And you can make your own hand sanitizer. Real simple, real easy. Um, in fact, we have it in my office. And we, we, got, we got natural ones, too, because some people were – we didn't want to use alcohol, you know, like vodka on it. So we, we'll buy the natural ones and keep them in the office as well. But those are pretty toxic chemicals. And how many kids right now have these uh, hand sanitizers, these triclosane-loaded hand sanitizers, attached to their backpack in a little tiny container? I see it all the time. Kids should use these hand sanitizers. Not a good idea because of the triclosane. They disrupt your hormones, and that's why we think that it might be related to uh, cancer now. Let's go back to the callers. If you have a question, 844-44-DR-JOE. That number, by the way, rings through to my offices when I'm not on the air. Donna, how are we going to make your day better? Uh, yes, I was wondering about the avobenzone or the octocrylene, oxybenzone. Uh-huh. How are they in the sunscreen? Uh, those, not my favorite, actually. Um, but if my big concern is the titanium dioxide. Now, the oxybenzones can affect the hormones as well, so you got to be careful with those. The best thing, and I did a show on uh, sunscreens, if you go back to my, uh, my website, drjoesposito.com, the best thing is get about 15 or 20 minutes of sunlight and then cover up. Because if you go down to the if if you go to Africa if you go down to the Caribbean islands anywhere near the um, the equator you don't see the natives putting on sunscreen every day, they wear long pants, long shirts, and hats, so they cover up. So the best way to avoid sun damage is get about ten or fifteen minutes and then cover up with it. Okay. Oh, okay. And you had another then, question. Um, yes. Yes. Can I ask another question? Yes, that's what I thought you were calling about. Go ahead. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was wondering, is there anything naturally you can do for fibroid tumors? Yes, absolutely. Um, again, I'm not a medical doctor, so I'm not going to diagnose your fibroids. But when, what we found works with a lot of our patients with fibroids is we get them off all the stimulants. That's caffeine. So that's chocolate, coffee, tea, sodas, uh, any of the energy drinks, because the caffeine will really make it worse. And then once you clean up the diet, you go to a mostly plant-based diet, a lot of fruits and vegetables, little fruit, vegetables, nuts and seeds, a lot of raw food, probably 60 to 80% of your diet raw I've had many, uh -huh. many cases where the fibroids actually start to shrink, the pain goes away, and patients come in all the time, and they go to their, their medical doctors, and they say, listen, whatever you're doing, just keep doing it because it's working. And we get them on a oh. good plant-based diet. Of course, everybody gets on Dr. Joe's, almost everybody gets on Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. So, uh -huh. yeah, we put together a whole nutrition protocol for patients, uh, but at least the Super Greens Essential Source and cutting out the animal products, the meats, the dairies, and the caffeines. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thanks for calling, Donna. And folks, if you have a question, 844-44-DR-JOE, 4 4 drjoe Got a lot more to talk about, about the chemicals on the, the new cancer list uh, that you're being exposed to. We're going to talk about your shower curtain, uh, washing your hands, what that means, uh, laundry, cabinets, sunscreen will cover a little bit more. And one of the secrets to it all is don't get stressed out over it. As long as you're doing a lot of things, you're going to be exposed to things that you can't control. If you have a question, give me a call, 844-44-DR-JOE. My website, drjoesposito.com. You can order Dr. Joe Super Greens, Essential Source, Seasonal Booster, uh, the Intestinal Cleanser, all on the website. Also on Amazon, too, if you have an Amazon account. My books, I didn't even mention my books today. All my books are on there as well. Uh, if you have a question, you can send it to me through the website as well. I'm more than happy to do that. And if you want to make appointments, of course, you can do that through the website, drjoesposito.com. Hey, folks, tell your friends about the show. Don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back. Don't.
Hey, folks, thanks for being here. Again, this is the show where we naturally get you well and keep you well. We want to give you the tools that you need to take control of your own health. And the biggest complaint I get in my offices all day, every day is, why didn't I do this sooner? Why didn't somebody tell me about this when it comes to neck again? We're chiropractors, neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, car accidents, sports injuries. People don't realize. And then people come in all the time. You know, I've been meaning to come see you guys for, and then they fill in the line, you know, months, days, years, decades. And I'm finally getting around to it. And then we check them out. And sometimes their condition, which started out as a simple misaligned vertebrae that would have been easy to fix, has now led to degenerative arthritis and bone spurs and, and, and uh, disc de- de- dehydration. And it takes a lot more work to fix. So don't wait when it comes to your health. Don't put it off. And Well, right after the holidays, right after my birthday, right after this picnic, right after my cruise. No, now's the time to do it. Because if you do it before these big events and you wake it through these big events, the other, when you come out on the other end, you're already home. The problem's solved. But a lot of things we're talking about today you, you don't realize you're doing. And we're talking about chemicals that you might be exposed to that might be causing cancer. And you want to avoid a chemical called DEHP. This is a chemical used to make plastic soft. And it's used in shower curtains, floor tiles, uh, packages with vinyl encasements, such as curtains and beddings. You know, those little, like, plastic bags, those clear bags they, carry, they come in. Vinyl plastics are marked with a number three in the recycling triangle. But they may not bear any, any indication of what type of plastic it is. So if you see the number three, not a good idea. Uh, use your sniffer. Use your nose. I'm Italian. I have a very big nose. Like I said, I have a Roman nose. It roams all over my face. So. If the product smells like plastic, chances are it's got that vinyl in there. You want to stay away from it. Wash your hands. Vinyl may not be avo- uh, avoidable in some cases. You're going to touch things. I mean, if I'm going to buy new sheets or something and it comes in this vinyl wrapping, I have to touch the sheets to get them out of the bag, and I have to touch the bag. That's why I never, ever use clothes, bed sheets, pillowcases uh, bef- without washing them first. Get a lot of those chemicals because sometimes even have formaldehyde in them or on them. So use your hands. Uh, you, you, you Wash your hands. I'm sorry. Electrical cords. How many people touch their wiring on their computers every day? Christmas tree lights. And on that plastic wire shelving that people have in their closets, that stuff is falling off every single day. In some cases, companies add lead to these products as an ultraviolet stabilizer so that the uh, 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 colors don't fade. Keeps the sunlight from drying them out. So when you handle these types of plastic, wash your hands to prevent exposure to DEHP. And get the the dust off your body as well if you can. Test your soil. If you're an organic gardener, and I am, you might want to check your soil. You can always send it off to the, I think it's the extension office. Where I live, you send it off to the extension office, and they'll test your soil for you. But make sure you don't have a lot of lead or heavy metals in the soil that are just going to be absorbed right up into your crops. And you're thinking, I'm growing organic food. It's good for me, when really it's not. You know, be be vigilant if you're in a house that was built before 1978. That's the year lead paint was banned. But if it was painted before 1978, you want to be careful with that. You want to have somebody who knows how to remove that paint or certainly cover it up because that can be a bad thing too. Do your own laundry. A lot of delicate fabrics fabrics you don't have to send to the dry cleaner. You can wash them by hand. They have these chemicals you can use um, to wash them by hand. You have your washing machine setting. If you ever looked at your washing machine setting, it might have hand wash as a setting. You could actually use that. Because perchloroethylene, that's the chemical they use in dry cleaning, can trigger asthma attacks and headaches. And that's why when patients come in our offices, we try to dig a little deeper. We try to find out where their problem is coming from. And sometimes we have to dig really deep. What kind of perfume do you use? What kind of clothes soap do you use? I used to have a roommate years and years and years ago named Kay, and she was wonderful. And she was so sweet that I would do my laundry. She'd put it in a dryer for me. And right after Kay moved in, I started itching all over the place. And I never put two and two together. And then one day I went to get the clothes out of the dryer, and sure enough, she was using dryer sheets. Very nice of her. She didn't do anything malicious, but I was itching like crazy. And I said, listen, Kay, if you do my laundry or if you do my drying, please don't put dryer sheets in. She said, okay. Stopped using them. Itch went away. So I never recommend using dryer sheets because what they do is they they don't really make your clothes soft. They put a coating, almost like a greasy coating, on your clothes to make them feel soft. Not a chemical you want to expose yourself to. If you get new cabinets in your home, be careful with that because pressed board and, and pressed woods, they'll use glue 
um, that may have formaldehyde in it. So if something smells like that new car smell or the new cabinet smell, chances are it has a formaldehyde in there. You want to ask for formaldehyde-free glues and finishes because those chemicals can outgas for a long time. Same thing like new carpets. I, I don't have any carpet in my house. I would recommend you don't have any carpet in your house either. And if you're going to do hardwoods, make sure they're pre-finished hardwoods. Don't put them down and then stain them because that, can, that outgassing can occur for months afterwards. The white sunscreen, we kind of touched on that a little earlier. It's nice to spread on sunscreen and watch it disappear, but that disappearing act usually means the sunscreen contains chemicals that can interfere with your hormones. They contain nanoparticles, microscopic particles of titanium dioxide or zinc oxide, which can get into your blood system and cause brain damage. So if you have a sunscreen, make sure when you rub it on, it takes a while. You got to kind of rub it intensely to get it to dissolve or leave a little white coating, which is perfectly fine, folks. That's really what you're looking for. And again, you're going to be exposed to chemicals that you can't avoid. So you sometimes got to just relax and don't be too paranoid. I've had patients say to me, well, Dr. Joe, you, you seem like so strict on everything, what you eat, the way you wash your clothes, the water you drink. I said, yeah, I am, but it's not hard. It's easy. You have to do it anyway. You have to eat food anyway. You might as well eat good food. And then we incorporate, of course, chiropractic care into our patients because we want to make sure the nervous system is working properly because the nervous system controls everything. And this is why you're seeing the trend toward uh, natural health care. You're seeing the opioid crisis coming to a head. Finally, it's making the news because people are dying every day. Is it 90, 92 people a day? I think that's the quote I read. 92 people a day die of, die of opioid uh, overdoses in the United States every day. And so what's happening now, the hospitals are recommending that you use alternative health treatments before you go to opioids, including things like chiropractic, massage, acupuncture. The thing they didn't put on the list is nutrition. And I'm a little disappointed with that because so many foods that you eat are inflammatory. And we're going to talk about that with aspirin and cancer in, uh, when we come back. As a matter of fact, we're going to have to go to break soon. But aspirin, inflammation, and cancer. And should you be taking an aspirin every day? And if not, what alternative do we have to help our bodies reduce inflammation? And one of the things, of course, is changing your diet, cutting out what I call the seven deadly sins of nutrition, alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener, eating foods that are anti-inflammatory. That's one of the many reasons I created Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. It's concentrated fruits and vegetables, prebiotics, probiotics, digestive enzymes, complete multivitamin, tastes great, relatively inexpensive, just around $2 a day for a scoop of Dr. Joe's Super Greens and the Dr. Joe's Essential Source. A lot of people report that they eat less food, and so they're actually making money by taking the Super Greens, the essential source, because they feel more satisfied. Folks, got to go to a break. Follow me on Instagram. Follow me on Facebook. Uh, give, give us a call if you have a healthcare question, 844-44-DR-JOE, 844-44-DR-JOE. Don't wait when it comes to your health. You may not have a second opportunity. So if you go to my website, drjoesposito.com, you can order Super Greens, essential source. My products are all there. Send me questions. Uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. I send out stuff every week on there too, drjoesposito.com. Hey, tell your friends about the show. We'll be right back. Hey, tell your I am so glad that you're here. Thanks for spending a little time with me. I am the aforementioned Dr. Joe Esposito, and we're talking today about uh, chemicals that may be causing cancer. And the American Cancer Society and the Presidential uh, Cancer Panel are all saying these are suspect. Some of them are already known to cause certain cancer, and now they may be linked to other cancers. And the thing is this, when it comes to health care, when it comes to diet, do the things that are the safest. You know, we know that people enjoy what I call the seven deadly sins of nutrition, alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, artificial sweetener. We know people enjoy that. I did when I was normal. And I ate that type of diet, and I was overweight, and I was sick all the time. And once I realized that food has such a big uh, part of your health care— I changed my diet, and I got better, and now I teach you guys how to do it. And as a chiropractor, of course, I can't imagine life without having uh, chi chiropractic care to line the spine up. And, and just the other day, I was at a party, and somebody wanted me to try this dish and this dish, and I ate too much. And my stomach was full, and I've, I, I felt the, I was burping a lot, and I felt the food refluxing up into my throat. So I grabbed one of my doctors the next day. I said, pull my stomach away from the diaphragm, and Dr. Gale pulled my stomach away from my diaphragm, and I was fine. But I knew what I did, and I knew how to fix it. And unfortunately, for years, I didn't. I always had that feeling like I just couldn't swallow well. Uh, I coughed a lot, sore throat all the time. 
and it was my stomach pushing up against my diaphragm and acid was coming up into my throat. So once I fixed it, I was fine. So when we talk about these chemicals, a lot of times you don't know that there's a problem. Now I've told you there is. And if you miss some of it, you can go to my website, drjoesposito.com, and we archive all our radio shows there. So you can pick any show you want and just go to media and then subscribe to my YouTube channel. And whenever we post something, we post usually once or twice a week. Uh, I will send you a little email that says, hey, guess what? You know, we're sending something out and you might want to listen to it. Here's the link or watch it. Sometimes I put videos on there as well. And this way you can have a, a, a consistent flow of knowledge coming into your life every day or every couple of days. And then you can decide what you want to do and what you don't want to do. I get that you're not going to do everything. I understand that. But I want you to consider doing something every day. And I teased a while ago, I was talking about aspirin, and should aspirin be taken to prevent cancer? Now, it's long been recognized that preventative role of daily aspirin for patients with heart disease is a good thing. Doctors say take a baby aspirin every day to help prevent heart disease. Now it appears that you can kill two birds with one stone, so to speak. Daily low-dose aspirin may help prevent certain forms of cancer as well. Now, there's going to be a twist to this, so hang on. There's a surprise ending to this. How does it work? Nobel Prize in Medicine went to a team that discovered how aspirin works. There's enzymes called Cox enzymes, uh, cyclooxygenase, and they take the pro-inflammatory omega-6 fatty acids or arachidonic acid in your body, and they, that you get it from your, from your body or you get it from your diet, things like chicken and eggs are high in omega-6 fatty acids, soybean oil, corn oil, uh, canola oil. These are all uh, very high in omega-6 fatty acids, peanuts. Now, our enzymes take the arachidonic acid and turn it into inflammatory mediators like thromboxin, and this produces thrombosis, which is clots, and prostaglandins, which increase inflammation. So the bottom line is this. If you're eating a lot of omega-6 fatty acids, your body is going to convert them uh, through Cox enzymes, and it's going to create inflammation. Now, inflammation is, is part of all diseases, heart disease, cancer, diabetes, all diseases known to man. So aspirin suppresses the enzymes, and with less thrombo thromboxin means fewer clots, and less prostaglandin means less pain, less swelling, less fever. But the prostaglandins can also dilate something called your lymphatic vessels inside uh, tumors, which allow cancers to cell, to cancer cells to spread. So the inflammation causes vasodilation, opens up the blood vessels, and the cancer cells can now travel through your lymphatic system and get spread all over your body. So one of the ways cancer tries to kill us is by boosting the COX activity. Okay, so we want to be careful. If we block the COX enzymes, we re reduce pain, but it also can prevent the spread of cancer through the lymphatic system. That's one of the ways we think aspirin can prevent cancer. By counteracting tumors, it attempts to pry open the lymphatic bars, the, the lymphatic, uh, try to contain the cancer, pops it open, so to speak, and allows it to spread. And that's a dangerous place uh, to be. The reduction in mortality due to some cancers occurred within two to three years after aspirin was started. So it took a while, but after two to three years of people taking aspirin on a regular basis, their risk of cancer dropped. The only way aspirin can save us that fast was by suppressing the growth and spread of tumors that already existed. Aspirin appeared to cut the risk of met metastasis in half, particularly for adenocarcinomas like colon cancer. So the cancer, not only the, the, the aspirin is not only reducing pain, but it's also helping uh, with uh, reduction of cancer. So this sounds like something good, doesn't it? This sounds like something that should be all over the news. It's not. And I don't know why. It's really surprising. Oh, by the way, folks, the lines are open. If you have a healthcare question, 844-44-DR-JOE, 844-44-DR-JOE. want to make sure I give out the number so you can get in before we uh, have to go to break or uh, wrap up this segment of the show. 844-44-DR-JOE. So the benefits may outweigh the risks because there are risks to, to, to uh, taking um, uh, aspirin every day. So it can help with your circulation. It can help with heart attacks, strokes, cancer, bleeding. Aspirin uh, uh, comes out looking like preve pre preventative overall, potentially expanding your life, life expectancy. So the higher risk of major bleeding, even at low-dose aspirin, but fewer heart attacks, so there is a bleeding issue, uh, fewer heart attacks, clotting, and cancer. Hmm. Sounds like this is a good thing. Now, note, the age categories only go up to 74 years old. That's because the risk of bleeding on aspirin increases steeply as you age. 
So it may tip the balance the other way. So after 74 years old, you might bleed to death. So then you don't want to take a lot of aspirin. But in younger folks, the, the data certainly has reached a, a buzz in the healthcare community. The emerging evidence on aspirin's cancer protection highlights an exciting time in cancer prevention. Sounds like a good idea. You know I'm going somewhere with this, right? I'm building up to a, to a, to a big uh, crescendo here. Aspirin pills, even at low doses, have a propensity to damage the lining of your stomach and intestines, increase the risk of gastrointestinal bleeding, and that can constrain health authorities from recommending aspirin to the general public. So this is why you probably haven't heard about this all over the news because there is a downside. You can increase your risk of gastrointestinal bleeding. Recent meta-analysis, that's when they take a bunch of different studies and put them all together and say, what's the general consensus? Recent meta-analysis estimate that just a single year of low-dose aspirin therapy will induce major gastrointestinal bleeding in one out of 833 people. So there is a risk. It's there. If only there were a way to get all the benefits of aspirin without any of the risk of gastrointestinal bleeding. Well, the good news is, well, you know where I'm going with this. Of course, there's a reason. There's a rational answer for this. The aspirin phytonutrient, it's called salicylates, isn't just found in aspirin, but throughout the plant kingdom. This explains why the active ingredient aspirin is found normally in the bloodstream, even in people who don't take aspirin. So the good news is the salicylates can be found in plants, not just in chemical aspirin or the willow tree, which is where they get uh, the, the aspirin originally from. Folks, got to go to break. When I come back, I'm going to tell you how you can increase your salicylate levels in your blood, which can reduce your risk of cancer, heart disease, and stroke without any of the risk of gastrointestinal bleeding. It can actually prevent gastrointestinal bleeding. Folks, if you have a question, the number here is 844-44-DR-JOE. My website, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe, number one Dr. Joe in the world. Lots of good information on that website. We have, we, we have our YouTube channel. Subscribe to that. We send out all our radio shows there. Subscribe to my newsletter. We want to be your doctors. Hey, folks, don't go anywhere. Tell your friends about the show. We'll be right back. But Hey, folks, thanks for being here. Again, this is the show that we naturally get you well and keep you well. We give you the tips and tools that you need that you, so that you can start getting well every single day. We're talking today about cancer, uh, new chemicals that uh, the American Cancer Society is putting on a list of suspected uh, carcinogenic carcinogens or things that might cause cancer. And um, now we're talking today about aspirin a day. And supposed to get it every day will damage. Okay, there you go. Somebody has a question about aspirin on the air too. So, so let me talk about this. Uh, and uh, maybe I'll answer the question here too. If not, I'll, I'll get up there. So the, what we're saying is that if you take an aspirin a day, it lowers, it's, it shuts down the COX-2 enzymes. It's a, it's a COX inhibitor. And what that does is it reduces pain and inflammation and can prevent the blood vessels from opening up vasodilating around the tumors, which can then spread the cancer cells throughout the body. So it sounds like it's a good thing. Well, we found out that the aspirin phytonutrient, the, the salicylic acid, uh, is found not only in willow trees, that's where it was originally uh, discovered, but throughout the plant kingdom and explains why the active ingredient aspirin is found normally in people, uh, people's bloodstream of people who don't even take aspirin. So this goes into Dr. Joe was right column. Just one fruit smoothie, within an hour and a half, your levels rise of these of the chemical and aspirin. That seems to be the, the active ingredient. So as you can see, one smoothie isn't going to do it, but if you eat it on a regular basis of eating fruits and vegetables, you can increase your levels of the chemical that reduces the inflammatory reaction in your body and can help prevent the spread of cancer, but also the other benefits that come along with aspirin, reduction of heart disease, thinning your blood, reduction of clots, so here now we have something good because the problem is with aspirin, it can increase your risk of uh, gastrointestinal bleeding, and that could be a serious issue. Kinds of aspirin levels uh, sufficient to suppress the expression of that inflammatory enzyme implicated in can cancer. They found that even low levels caused by a smoothie consumption every day significantly suppress the expression of that inflammatory enzyme at the genetic level. How cool is that? So, if aspirin phytonutrient is made by plants, we might expect that plant eaters have higher levels. And indeed, we did find higher levels of these chemicals in plant-based eaters like vegetarians. So because the anti-inflammatory action of the aspirin is probably the result of uh, salicylic acid, and the concentrations of salicylic acid seen in vegetarians has been shown to inhibit the inflammatory COX enzyme, it's plausible that dietary salicylates 
may contribute to the beneficial effects of the vegetarian diet. So once again, I will say Dr. Joe was right because I've been plant-based now for 31 years, and this is another reason. Now, before I went plant-based, I had a lot of chronic injuries. I broke my back twice. Um, I was hit by a car when I was a kid. I landed on my head. This was in Germany. I was visiting relatives. Landed on my head. They thought I was dead. They left me on the side of the road for dead. Um, some guy stayed with me, and this is way before cell phones. I was in between towns and little tiny town in Germany, and it took quite a while, maybe an hour or so or longer before an ambulance finally came, and I said, nope, he's dead. Put a sheet over me when they put me in the ambulance. I moved, and they said, oh, I guess he's not dead. So I played football. I played hockey, street fights. So I always had pain. Every day of my life, I was in pain. And when I went to a plant-based diet, along with chiropractic care, my pain was substantially reduced. And one of the reasons now, the research is out, I didn't realize this, you know, three decades ago, w one of the reasons is that I'm increasing the level of the chemical in my blood that blocks the COX enzyme, which causes the pain, which now reduces the pain and reduces the inflammation. So it effectively all aspirin flowing through our systems, we all have this chemical, Plant eaters must have higher rates of ulcers because, of course, aspirin increases your risk of bleeding. Aspirin can go directly through the gut and kind of chew through it, but vegetarians appear to have significantly lower risk of ulcers in both men and women. So for general population, eating plants instead of taking aspirin, you might not get the benefit. You'll get the benefits without the risks. Now, that sounds like a good gamble I want to take on my health. What's the best way to get well for the least amount of money with the lowest amount of risk. And when it comes to pain and reducing your risk of cancer, it's probably going to be a plant-based diet. Because plants, the salicylic acid may come naturally prepackaged with gut protective nutrients because there's no scientific reason as to why if you're getting your salicylates from uh from plants, why you don't have the bleeding, but you don't. So, for example, nitric oxide in your diet, the nitrates uh, exert stomach protective effects by boosting blood flow and protecting the, uh, the, the mucus lining of your stomach. And that's great for a uh, pro-ulcerative impact uh, of aspirin. So if you're taking aspirin, you want to do, do foods that are high in nitrates. And that would be things like beets, arugula, very high in nitrates. Arugula, 10 times the amount of nitrates as beets. So you hear sometimes people talk about beet powder, which is great. Arugula, it's like a lettuce if you've never had it. It's like a little bitter lettuce. It's really good. You might want to consider adding arugula to your diet as well, which will increase circulation, which can then help offset any damage you might have from aspirin. Or eating more plants gives you the same benefit as taking the aspirin, reduction in pain, reduction of inflammation, without the dangerous side effects. So isn't that cool that the things I've been talking about for the past year, 30 years plus, the research is now showing another reason why you should take it. Just like Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source, I talk about them all the time because those are the minimum amount of nutrients I believe everybody should be taking on a daily basis. Actually, there's a little more than just that. Like in the winter, I take vitamin D3. I take omega-3 fatty acids. I take algae oil from my, the purest form of omega-3 fatty acids, which are also anti-inflammatory. But I think if, if you want to start a program, if you already are on a healthy road, add the Super Greens and the Essential Source. I think you'll be very, very happy with the results. It's two powders. I take a scoop of each. I mix it with coconut milk, shake it up, and drink it. If you have kids, because kids are so often ignored when it comes to health care for some reason, you want to get them on a good diet. And if you take a frozen banana with the super greens, the essential source, kids seem to love it. So you can do that as well, make a smoothie for them. And that's going to get them those nutrients, the salicylates, the, uh, the, the nitrates, and the minimum amount of nutrients. So those are on my website, drjoesposito.com, also available on uh, Amazon. If you have an Amazon account, you can get them there as well. So, uh, Debbie, I don't know if I'll get to your, your, your question. Was supposed to take an aspirin every day. Will it damage her more uh, to take it? Uh, the answer is I don't want to be your doctor. I don't want to tell you to take drugs or not take drugs. Uh, but what you could do is go to a plant-based diet, and hopefully you won't need the drugs. That's kind of my goal. So the Super Greens, the Essential Source, the Seasonal Booster, there are things on my website I take for cold and flu. There's other things. If I feel cold or fluish, I take that. If I want to keep my immune system strong, I take some things there as well. Uh, Dr. Joe's Intestinal Cleanser, make sure the bowels are moving every day. My books are on my website, Eating Right for the Health of It, Prescription for Extreme Health. 
also also available on Amazon as well. So, folks, going to have to go. If you missed the show, you missed a great show, it's going to be on my website, drjoesposito.com. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. We post things all the time. We'll send you a link when we have it. If you want to listen, great. If you don't, that's okay, too. And listen, if I don't say it enough, thank you so much for listening. And thank you for telling your friends about the show, because even when I'm on the air, I see people liking us on Facebook, uh, following us on Facebook, following us on Instagram. I want you to do that, too, because we want to naturally get you well and keep you well. Get you next time. Keep you well.